What's up guys, it's Mike here, and today we're back with another video. Today I figured we'd switch it up a little bit. I'm not gonna go out on the lake today, it was super windy. The John boat would just be absolutely insane in this kind of wind. I figured what we'd do today is go over everything that's inside my tackle bag. Um, it's got all my gear in there, I pack it out just for what I need for that day, and uh, I figure I'd show you guys what's inside of it, and we'll kind of go through and see how I pack it out. All right guys, so first up in the tackle bag is the hard plastics. So I also bring my jigs along with me inside the plastics box and I like to throw the green pumpkin. Um, green pumpkin usually works really, really good, especially with that big old fat trailer on the back. I use the big old chunk trailer. You stick that sucker right through that hook and it does not come off. This one works really, really good. Green pumpkin. I think this is a half ounce. This sucker will get down really, really fast. I've got it in different sizes, different brands. Here's another green pumpkin one. I think this is a cheaper one, but they all work pretty good. A little bit smaller size. Do that in the black and blue. Same thing here. Whoa, lipless crankbait on. A little green pumpkin action. Deep Diver, DD22. Use that for slow rolling, trolling, whatever you need to do. The sucker will go down 22 feet, get yourself some of those real deep, deep summer bass. DD22, love it, you gotta get yourself one. For lipless crankbaits, got the crawdad red color, two different sizes, the big boy, and the mini. I like throwing a lot of the uh, lipless crankbaits, different colors. Some of my favorite um, crankbaits to throw. Also the square bill ones, these little guys right here, those ones work really, really good. That little square bill, got a little wiggle to it. I've thrown this one so much that the dang eyes have knocked off of it. I had to like color them back on with a marker, but uh, they work really good. In that last video, my dad caught this one. Got a fish with this red color one. This one's really good. Crawdad red. What else we got in here? Got a little top rotter frog action. My dad likes throwing this one. Another one in a hard plastic version. I don't think we've ever caught anything with this one, but we throw it sometimes. So I got a couple of poppers, and honestly, I don't really don't throw a lot of top water, but I got a couple poppers here. I have caught a few fish on, but not, not really anything crazy. But I rock those two different colors and different sizes, so it's pretty good. Caught a couple on this best colored one. So there's my poppers. Some more little lipless crankbait. Some of these Walmart little uh, crankbaits in there. I'm telling you, man, you throw those cheap baits, the bass don't care. Now, another good one here my dad catches a ton of fish on is the Flicker Shad. This bad boy is dynamite. Flicker Shad, really good. I think this is like a six to eight depth diver. Flicker Shad. Got another one here. I think this is like a eight to nine foot diver. This one works pretty good. Now, this bad boy right here, I have caught hundreds of fish on, literally. And it's a Cabela's lipless crankbait. This sucker is beat to heck. But I've caught so many fish on it. Probably my absolute favorite crankbait to throw is this one right here in just a straight up silver. And last but not least, I've got my jerkbait. This is my favorite jerkbait to throw. Catch a lot of fish on this bad boy. Kind of expensive, I think it's like 12 bucks. But if you're gonna throw a jerkbait for uh, walleye or anything or any of those uh, Suspended fish, throw this bad boy right here. Works really good. I think it's that little red flasher they got on the end of it. So that's what I got for my hard plastics. I think we'll move on to the soft plastics. Bam! Soft plastics. It is embarrassing, but look at that. These suckers are literally overflowing. This is the best way I know how to keep it all organized is by keeping them inside their bags. I don't have a ton of uh, Plano boxes because they all go inside of my backpack. So I just keep everything in this box here and I just pile them all on. But it, I mean, it works. All right, so first up, got the plum curly tail worm. Throw that sucker in a 10 and a half inch. Bam. Texas rig this mofo. Go for some night fishing, summer bass. Put a big old half ounce bulletproof weight on there. That's right, I said bulletproof. Get yourself some of those bad boys, 10 and a half inch, works real good. 
All right, my last video down there in the creek, I was using these little curly tail grubs. These suckers rock, especially when the fish don't want to bite. You get yourself one of these little white curly tail worms, put that on a tiny little jig head. Works really, really good. Catch all kinds of fish with that. Gary Yamamoto, pink sinks. Get yourself some pink Cinco, guys. I'm telling you, they work. Got some little Ned worms here. These bad boys have a tiny, tiny, tiny little hook at the end of here. A little Ned worm action. I like throwing the Ned. It's pretty cool. Some tiny little crappie plastics there. In case you want to go for some smaller fish. My wife's per personal favorite right here, guys. The red worm. Got this in a little slim profile. Curly tail action. A little black on the top. Red worm. Texas rig that sucker. She catches a lot of fish on these ones. I think that's in a six inch. Whoa, blowing out over here. Green pumpkin trailers for your football jigs with a big old chunk on there. Get your thick hook through there. That sucker won't come off. Flukes. Got the super fluke in the pearl white. I think this is a five inch. And one thing about your flukes, guys, you want to make sure those suckers are straight. You don't want to be throwing no crooked fluke now. I'll have to make a video on how I boil these suckers. Keep those bad boys straight. Got my power bait Cinco's in the green pumpkin color. And these suckers right here, now they said they were new. Got these from Walmart, new fish scent. Supposed to get like 45% more fish. I don't know, we threw the heck out of these suckers. And they're really greasy and they got like a lot of salt on them. We didn't catch nothing on these bad boys. But all in all, Cinco action. You can Texas rig it, you can Carolina rig it. You can put it on a shaky head if you want to. I like to throw them wacky. Sometimes the fish want it wacky. Oh, I also have some little Ned worms in there. And the peanut butter and jelly color. Look at that. Bam. Ned worm. These little suckers are bad to the bone. All right, got some trick worms here in the green pumpkin. Little finesse worm. Put that on a shaky head. Those work really good. I think that's a four inch. Sometimes those fish get a little pressure and they go up under those docks. Skip that sucker right up under there. They'll smoke those trick worms. All right. Got a pro jig worm here. Little tiny little guy. You can rig it Ned style with a little jig head. Sometimes we'll throw these little guys. If the fish aren't biting the big stuff, they're definitely almost always biting the little stuff. Got some sparkly white jig trailers here. I'll throw these on like a spinner bait, something like that. Put a little bit more action on here. I'll use this little split tail. These work pretty good. Got the smoking shad in the silver and black. This is the four inch. Throw these suckers, top water. Um, you just kind of jig them along just like a regular old fluke. Basically, that's what they are. Empty bag here. Where's my little uh, paddle tail at? Oh, it fell out. I'm running low. Tell you what, these white paddle tails here, guys, you put a jig head on that sucker, and you can catch all kinds of fish with this. Whether it's summertime, whether it's winter, whether, whether it's uh, fall feeding, springtime, post-spawn, pre-spawn, you name it, this sucker right here catches a ton of bass. Green pumpkin tubes here. Now I don't throw a lot of tubes. My dad likes to throw tubes. You throw a little tube jig head on there. Um, heck, you can even Texas rig this sucker, really. We got them in the, um, the squid style. I don't really catch any fish with these, but I know a lot of people do. But the green pumpkin tube, got that. Crawfish jig trailer. Put that bad boy on there. Got it in the green pumpkin. Green pumpkin's probably honestly the best color to fish with. Out of any other color, if you had to choose one color, green pumpkin's way to go. So that's the crawfish trailer there. Whoa, I'm gonna save the big boys for last. We gotta save the big boys for last. They're spilling out, they're spilling out. Uh-oh. So I got my dark green curly tail worm, six inch. Texas rig this sucker. Dynamite, all around dynamite, curly tail worms. Awesome baits. Get them in the curly tail. So the big boys spilled out here. These are the 14 inch worms. 
14 inch black. Look at that thing. Holy crap. This one's, actually this one's cut off. We had to modify that damn thing down to a uh, 12 inch. Look at that. Look at this sucker. 14 inch worm. Holy crap, man, that's like up my arm. You throw that bad boy, you're gonna smoke a huge bass. We'll throw these guys at uh, nighttime or really, real deep water. Get them in the black, especially if you're fishing nighttime. You want those black baits. They'll uh, be able to lock onto those baits a little bit better, especially under moonlight. Okay guys, so that's my soft plastics here. I know it's kind of a disaster, but that's the best way I've found to keep all these suckers together just by keeping them in their bags. And I just pile these suckers on top of here, stuff them in. These Plano boxes are pretty much indestructible. I mean, I stuff this sucker so tight. These hinges are amazing on these Plano boxes. That sucker ain't breaking. Bam. Soft plastics, guys. That's what I'm rocking. So, last but not least on the big box here, terminal tackle. So first up, I know it's not a weight or a hook, but I keep my garlic sauce in there. You spike your little baits with this bad boy, especially those white jigs that I did in my last video, really, really works, especially in the summertime. So first up, speaking of jigs, got my white jig heads with a little spinner on the back. Catch those suckers in those uh, dark water situations. And right now, I'm rocking white and I'm rocking orange, 3 16 sounds, jig heads. Got a little catch all thing. With my really, really tiny, tiny, tiny little weights. Got some glass beads in there for Texas rigging. Now for my hooks, I'm using offset shank hooks. Um, two, three, four, and even five. And my fives, I like to use the big old gamagatsus, especially when I'm doing like weightless uh, flukes and stuff like that. I think the thicker hook, hook adds just a little bit more weight, helps you flick that fluke out there. Um, and then honestly, I just kind of rock the Equal Claw uh, brand. I don't really throw anything else that's too expensive because you lose so much of this stuff. But um, I'll throw the two, the three, and the four. I'd say my most popular size I'm throwing most of the time is probably the three. So next up in here is my big, huge egg weights, my slip weights for catfishing. Um, I'll throw one of these on there when I want to get that sucker down on the bottom and I don't want my bait to move. Get yourself some big old egg weights. Next up, got my half ounce bullet weights for my Texas rigging. I've also got my 3 16 ounce bullet weights, also for Texas. And once again for Texas rigging, my quarter for when I want to fill the bottom a little bit better. Helps uh, bounce along the bottom, get to fill all the grass, fill all the rocks, throw like a quarter or something like that. Tube jig heads for those green pumpkin tubes I have. And back to weights here. Split shots, just straight up pea size split shots. Throw some of these bad boys on your line when you're wanting to do uh, some bobber fishing. All right, for hooks here, I also have, I've got some of these little weed guarded hooks for wacky rigs. Those suckers work pretty good. And I forget what size I use for my drop shot, but I use that bad boy right there. Little drop shot hook. I even throw it when I want to wacky rig something. All right, so for my finesse worms, my um, drop shots, I use the uh, 3 16 ounce drop shot, little weight there. These ones have the, uh, the little piece of metal inside of it that if you get stuck on a rock or stuck on something on the bottom, that little metal thing will actually pull out from that lead weight and you won't lose your bait. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just like a little pincher up top. Um, and then I also use the, uh, the eighth ounce size for the lighter weight stuff when I want to fill the bottom a little bit better. And last but not least on the little weights here is 1 32nd ounce. Little baby bullets, little BBs. Throw those. And actually, I throw these suckers on like a crankbait. You put that on the front of a crankbait, especially the really lightweight ones, 
and those suckers will fly. So for my shaky head weights, I use the flat kind right here, the big old 316th ounce. Gotta have that little hook on there to uh, put your shaky head little, little trick worm. You just spin it on the top of that hook. Some tube weights. This must have fallen out of the thing there. And I'll also use the Ned Rig worms on these bad boys with the round head. They got that little sticker on the back. Keeps your bait in place. Also have just straight up jig heads with the weed guard. Seems to help sometimes. Honestly, when I throw weedless, I still get stuck. So it's probably better not even have a weed guard on your stuff half the time. Another shaky head, little hook right there. Got to have that little barb on there. Now, if you don't have that little barb, for instance, uh, I mean, m most of my stuff have it, but especially on these little Ned Rig ones, if you don't have that little barb on there, you have to super glue your worm to the head of that little mushroom, because if not, that sucker will just slide right off constantly. And that's pretty much what I got for my terminal tackle here, guys. We'll move on to my smaller little tackle boxes that I have in the front pouches there. And a lot of that stuff I just carry like jigs and some repair equipment, maybe even some real grease, and uh, I'll show you guys that. All right, so in this little box here, it's almost kind of became a cut y'all. Like I said, I'll keep like real oil inside of there. Um, I'll keep like replacement little eyes in case you uh, get into a situation where you snap a, a rod in half. Um, some of my smaller little dink fishing little baits here just like little you know trout fishing stuff some tinier little spinners uh, things like that you can tell it's, it's it's honestly it's kind of a disaster i don't really fish this box too much but it's my smaller stuff you know i've even got some little tiny little crappie weights inside of there stuff like that but um i'll keep my little rooster tail spinners in there i like throwing these for uh small bass especially like trout fishing uh, trout seem to work really, really good on these little little spinner rooster tails. Get yourself some of those. They work really good. Just little jigs inside of there. You know, if I'm white bass fishing, I like to throw these when I'm doing some smallmouth white bass, stuff like that. That thing's kind of a disaster. Like I said, I just kind of throw the, stuff, the tiny little small stuff in there. The little things, you know, that I just kind of need to keep with me just in case. A little micro box of just straight up tiny, tiny little flies in case I'm doing some perch fishing or taking one of the kids out and they want to catch some small little fish. I'll just bring some flies with me. Heck, you can even use these for trout fishing, but got a little fly box. It's fun to have. All right, for my spinner bait box, keep this in the front pouch as well. Little rigging section in here. It's got a little hook on there. You can actually take your little spinner baits out. Keep all my spinners in here. And they got a little hook, so you can put them down in this little groove and keep those suckers all intact, keep them all nice and organized. It's probably about the most organized box that I have in this whole bag setup. And that's about it for the spinners here, guys. What else do I got? As far as my power baits go, I just rocked the regular glitter white. Maybe I'm doing some trout fishing, or um, you can catch carp with this stuff all day long, too. Especially and that garlic scent. I don't know what it is about garlic, but fish, they just eat it up. You can use this for trout, for catfish, you name it. The garlic stuff works good. Now I've got some of these little gulp earthworms, and these guys work really good for, heck, pretty much almost any kind of fish. But I specifically use them uh, for trout fishing, especially when the trout are real deep in, uh, in the lake. There's one of these lakes out here that I fish that uh, they have trout in it, and those suckers are always, always down like 30 feet. So I'll throw one of these little worms on with um, some type of split shot weight or anything like that, or maybe one of the light uh, egg weights. I'll get that sucker down there and we'll catch some trout with that bad boy. If you don't want to dip your garlic, you spray it on. You put that bang, uh, that, uh, that garlic spray, you can spray this right onto your baits here. It won't change the color of any of your baits. Works really, really good for summer fishing, especially um, on those really hard days where the fish just aren't biting. You spray this garlic spray on and it seems to make them uh, bite a little bit more. And I always keep an extra thing in line with me. In this case, I'm just rocking some 10 pound right now. Um, I'll usually keep like 10, 8, and 6. 
I don't really throw a lot of uh, 12 pound test. I do have it rigged up on some of my uh, bait casters, but honestly, 10 and 8 seem to be my favorite. And especially right now, um, I like throwing the six pound fluorocarbon, especially on my smaller jigs. One more thing I keep in my tackle bag is a good set of needle nose pliers. And this one's got the, uh, the line crimper on the side. You want yourself a really good stout pair of needle nose pliers, especially when you get those real hard to get out hooks, uh, treble hooks, stuff like that. Um, gut hooking, you can get these out um, and it usually helps a lot instead of trying to use your hands. So a couple other things that I do keep in my bag that I don't have with me right now is um, a pair of good utility gloves. Um, anytime you get some of those uh, crazy fish where they get those hooks super deep, I like to put a pair of gloves on. And I also bring my headlamp. An absolute must have, especially when you're night fishing or any kind of fishing in a low light situation get yourself a really good headlamp. This one's a Bushnell. It's uh, 250 lumens. This sucker is bright. It's got the battery pack on the back. I think this will last like eight hours on full brightness. I'm telling you, 250 lumens is super bright. This thing's like a spotlight. It's also got a um, red light for uh, not affecting your night vision. Um, it also has a like a purple light, which is really nice. Keeps the bugs off your face, but you can still see around inside the boat. And then you've got your uh, your regular just bright, bright, bright white light and then a dimmer version of it. And uh, you guys got to get yourself one of these bad boys. This is a Bushnell one. They do make a, a brighter one. That's a 300 lumens, but it doesn't last as long. But honestly, 250 is extremely bright. So make sure you bring yourself a headlamp, especially when you're night fishing. Other than that, that's pretty much what we got inside the bag here, guys. All right, guys, so that's what I have in my bag right now. That's uh, everything. That's my soft plastics, my terminal tackle, my crankbaits, everything that I'm throwing right now. Now, I do have some more stuff on my John boat that I just kind of keep on there. I keep in the back. Sometimes I'll, you know, throw on certain baits that uh, I don't really put away. I just kind of hang them on the side. But um, everything that I do take to, like, the river, the creek, just in my John boat in general, I just throw into that bag and I take it with me. And it's it's perfect. It's a cheap Walmart bag. Fits all my tackle that I use in there. It's just a, it's a good choice for me. I can just throw it over my shoulder and go. If you guys got any questions or want to see anything else in detail, let me know down in the box. If you got any suggestions for things that I don't have in my bag that I should put in my bag, let me know. Oh, one other thing. What I do keep in my bag that I completely forgot to uh, to tell you guys is an absolute must is bug spray. Got to have a can of bug spray. And I usually bring that with me and sunscreen. You want to definitely have sunscreen, especially when you're out on the lake all day. Other than that, guys, uh, if you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.